and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Slime Fun with your host, Boomer. We have a problem, guys. As you can see, we have a negative power generation. I made some changes in the configuration down below in a dust farm. The original setup had the dust washers being the ones who would send the dust to three different places. It was going to the smelteries to become part of ingots. It was going to my fluffy barrel to store dust, and it was going to the ingot factory to make ingots. And it was being random, you know, through the round robin. And I kept wondering why some ingot production was so slow compared to others. And the thought process was is that when everything backed up from the dust storage, it would go to the ingot storage because the smelteries would have filled up pretty quick. And while, yes, that worked, it was horrendously slow. So I made a change. Instead of going through the dust washers, now everything is coming out of the dust storage. So I've added these inputs on the front to pull the dust storage to go from here to the ingots and over to the smelteries. And when I did that, everything kicked into a much higher gear because things got produced a lot faster. The dust came out of here faster and it came out of the ingots faster, especially since now I've upgraded them to level two ingot factories. So what will happen is I'll only know when I'm in trouble when these back up. Now it is possible that this could back up without having this completely full. If that's the case, I can send them to the trash can for a while so that the dust factories don't back up but in doing all of this we realized that we are way short on power and actually I had was doing some testing to see did it matter where in the network the energy regulator was in relation to the power generation and it doesn't matter I had outside daylight uh, energized solar generators and as a test in here in creative, I had put a few of them on and then watched this and it shot up in a green almost immediately. So I was going through with the debug fish just to make sure this was the debug fish to make sure that everything was working the way it should. And it seems to be so plain and simple. We need another nuclear power plant. The nice thing is, is that I've got most of the resources. So let me get crafting that sucker and we'll go back from there.
nuclear reactor about to go in and our reactor access port let's get rid of the, oh I don't want that one I don't want that one there we go okay take a bath in nuclear water see what happens so now on this end let's pull some reactor cells Let's pull some uranium and some neptunium. Okay. Oh, I grabbed the wrong cargo output node. Darn it. Need the advanced. Oh, don't you love when you do stuff like that? There we go. And I grabbed the plutonium too. I need that one. It's a good thing I got my hazmat suit on. I'd have been long dead. I probably played with the hazmat suit more on than off simply because of the amount of nuclear work you do here okay so uh, channel three two three so incoming reactor cells incoming uranium and incoming neptunium and on this side I'm not sure why I grabbed two Channel 3, Neptunium and Plutonium. Wrong Robin. Neptunium. Plutonium. And let's make sure the reactor, initially it doesn't detect it. You've got to get it to detect it. And what in the world? Magnesium, crushed ore, and flint. How did all of that, that all got in there because I connected it with the other node and I changed the channel. That explains it. This should not come back in. There we go. All right. So the first thing it's got to do is just get power. Let's just give it its first uranium and we'll give it some neptunium until the system gets built up. There we go. We are live with juice. So now let's watch what that does. Because in order to have every machine running 100%, we need this green, or at least at zero, at a bare minimum. Anything less than that, and it's some machines are not going to run. So I'm hoping that third reactor is enough to get us to where we need to be. So let's watch this just for a moment. And it looks like we're going to make it. Awesome. All right. And it's okay if it slowly drops down below zero for a very short period of time. As long as it hovers around there, we're good to go. So now with three nuclear reactors, the only thing we're going to have to kind of start to keep an eye on is the production of nuclear reactant cells. From what I've been able to see, these have been able to keep up. Because once this is full, we're going to have three stacks in there. And we're going to have three stacks in here. So as long as the ice farm, this literally, this is the nice thing about nuclear is that the ice farm only needs to produce one of those, um, or really three, every 20 seconds. And I'm on a level one freezer, and I'm pumping out ice, you know, one every second, second and a half. So getting six nuclear reactors up here for the entire base won't be an issue. Now, getting into global warming, this is what I had started working on, and then I realized I was way short on power. 
is that we've got to get a few things put together. So give me a chance to get reorganized here and we'll come back. All righty. Well, now that we've got that third nuclear power plant up and running, we're going to go a little bit here into the global warming situation that's brewing in this planet. Uh, first of all, we have a couple of devices put together. We have our thermometer that can take temperatures in Celsius, Fahrenheit, and for those 17 people in the world that use Kelvin, you can do that too. Um, for the 95% of the world that use the Celsius, and then us here in America. We also have an air quality meter. It has the same adjustments, and it tells us how much the temperature has changed since the start of the world. And it's a change because of, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the things that you mine, smell, nuclear power plants, making carbonados, making, you know, um, synthetic diamonds, whatever it happens to be, all that affects climate change. Now, this is going to continue on at some point. I'm going to put it in Fahrenheit because that's what I'm used to doing, although I can do the conversion. Since the game started, the temperature has gone up a little bit. Actually, it had gone up plus 0.17 Fahrenheit. It was roughly 0 0.09 Celsius. So I brought it back down a little bit. If you don't address this, if you've got global warming and you do not address it, at some point, you're going to start dying a lot. You're going to have problems in your world. You're going to have ice melting. You're going to die. You're going to ignite on fire. You risk some dangerous scenarios. So what we have here is an air compressor. And what the air compressor can do is pull carbon dioxide out of the air, or out of the atmosphere. You're going to create glass bottles. And with the glass bottle recipe, we're going to create carbon dioxide canister. So first, you're going to take um, a glass bottle and surround it by six solder. And then eventually what that will do, if you put it in an air compressor, it takes it out as a CO2 canister. So now you have compressed CO2. And then from there, we're simply going to send it right to the trash. I haven't found a use for it. Um, so what we're going to do, and actually I'm going to have to automate this as coming in at some point here, simply because um, we have three nuclear power plants going. So I'm going to have to take a automatic vanilla crafter and an automatic slime fun crafter and put these two together. But for the moment, we're going to stick these canisters in just so you can see. It takes ballpark five, six seconds to fill up a canister. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the input node here just so you can see it happening. And it'll hold two in here. So if you don't automatically pull this out, it's just going to sit here. It doesn't stack. So you do have to uh, get them out frequently. So I would just use the network node, send it right to a trash can. It takes roughly, I don't have the exact number, but based on what you're doing to affect climate change with temperatures going up will depend on how fast the amount of carbon dioxide pulled out of the air will lower the temperature. Right now, for me, it takes about a stack of canisters to make a 0 0.01 Fahrenheit drop. So I've gone through about five stacks of canisters so far to get it down from plus 0.17 to plus 0.12. Not that small, but right, it's not going to affect a whole lot. But over time, it's going to get up there, especially as we continue to add and automate. So this is why I'm going to have to really set this and forget it. And as long as I'm generating glass and solder, and solder is relatively easy to, to get. I mean, you want to see how quick it is to get solder. Magne or lead and tin. That's it. So we're going to be able to generate a, a lot of that. I'm just got to make sure I stay on top of it. Uh, let's see, lead is this one. So my lead is still full there and still full here. And I've pulled out about 30 stacks in roughly, uh, actually the world did run while I was uh, off the world because this isn't a spawn chunk, so it did fill back up. But I'm going to guess for now we're probably okay. So climate change, there isn't a whole lot to it. And like I, I kind of reeled off some of the things, you kill mobs. Yeah, you um, 
you know, a lot of the things that you craft, anything carbon related, nuclear, blistering ingots, all that stuff helps create additional climate change increases like here. It just, we just got a warning as the temperature went up 0 0.06. So if I switch over to Celsius, it is, and it does by default give you a Celsius warning in the config. So the temperature difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit is normally you know, times 1.8 plus 32. Uh, here you just multiply it by 1.8. So it should be around 11 to 12 Fahrenheit. So we've actually brought it down because it was just 0 0.12 a little while ago. I'm going to leave it in Fahrenheit simply because that's where we started and that's what I'm used to. Also, you'll notice when the temperature starts going up or down pretty quick, you'll know that it's nighttime or day just by looking at this. Right now, I know it's daytime, but if that temperature starts to drop, I know night could be coming by. So that's pretty much it for global warming, guys. Uh, there isn't a whole lot more to it except do everything you can to keep your world from going, you know, crazy and <laughs> becoming really hot. Um, so we're going to wrap this one up. I'll get this out to you guys here shortly. I want to thank you again for watching. Thank you all for your great feedback and comments and suggestions. I really appreciate it. But as always, when you play Minecraft, you got to go, Boomer, or you got to go home. We'll see you later.